And that was amazing. I loved that scene. That was one of my favourite scenes. I haven't actually seen it. Have you seen it? I have, yes. I'm looking forward to getting to see it. And, um, and I loved, and I hope it kind of comes across that, that element of it finally dropping in. It was, it's completely brand new thoughts. I think he probably had on this long journey to get there, this pre-prepared speech of what he would say and how he was going to say it and how he was going to take Augusta home and Bolica essentially. And it's, what's lovely to play is that it feels like it's in that moment he realises it's everything that Charlotte has been saying to him, everything Charlotte says to him just before they enter the tavern. And it's dropping in at that time he realises what's going on and the lesson and how best to handle it. And it, and it, it was exciting to play with both speaking to Augusta, but also subtly to Miss Hayward and also, you know, Jack's Edward's character, the character of Edward there in the room as this kind of elephant in the room and not knowing how to deal with that. There were so many things at play, but I think it's a kind of a poignant and powerful moment for him. And I hope that comes across. I know what you mean. Yeah, it probably must feel watching it quite voyeuristic to kind of see that. Because as you say, in Pride and Prejudice, for instance, you would just hear about it later on and it would be this unknown heroic act. I think it's because you see everything. The show is so through Charlotte's eyes. And in a way, you you see all the characters and the story so much through her that... Um, you needed to go on the journey with her as the audience to really witness it. And uh, I wasn't aware of that being a different trope at the time, but as you, as you talk about it now, that, that certainly is there. But I think it's great for the audience to have the satisfaction of seeing Colburn, as I was saying, in that moment change and discover rather than hear about it later on. It's uh, probably one of the moments where the writers could actually take some poetic license and say, well, Jane Austen might not have done it this way, but we can. And our more modern audience now can really see that. And as an actor, that was great to have that journey rather than just to hear about it, to actually go through all the levels in the room. I think for an actor like me that I was and that I still am, just playing such a big juicy role <laughs> was such a privilege. And so I'll miss that big juicy role, but I just loved his journey and his decency and uh, his stoicism and his, his huge sense of integrity with a, but also with a twinkle and a sense of humor. And it was, it was that kind of, if Carlsberg made uh, characters, it, it felt like such um, a gift for me that I, I think I'll always look back on that so fondly. The, the costumes designed by uh, Laura Miller were so fantastic that I think I miss them as a whole. I don't think I miss them in a day-to-day -day, uh, life, especially when you have kids, etc. I'm not sure that the, uh, the knee-high boots and those dithery trousers with like, little buttons, um, which can't be dry cleaned or put in the wash or whatever. Those probably aren't the most uh, appropriate for my day-to-day -day life. But uh, in terms of the vibe and the energy they brought, it was, it was a, a job that like just kept on giving. And people keep asking me if I stole anything from set. And the answer is no, just because what would I steal that I could actually benefit from in real life? And this is where I, I open this cupboard and there's a huge array of like Pride and Prejudice Sanderton gifts. But um falls out know. on top of you. Yeah, and they all fall on top of me. I'm like, oh, I don't know where these came from. <laughs>